Welcome to the new sound of online radio. Welcome to the sound of Universal Broadcasting Network. Yes, you make me feel like I've been locked out of hell. A mix of today's hits and hard to find favorites. Combined with the most entertaining and intriguing talk anywhere. This is your sound. This is the sound of Universal Broadcasting Network at UBNRadio.com. Okay, buddy. Welcome to Universal Broadcasting Network's Hit Afternoon Show, bringing you the latest in music news, artist interviews, and more with your hosts, Lauren Dare Owens, Ariel Fournier, and Adam Lusk. This is The Music Project. Hey everybody, it's Lauren Darrow Owens. It's Adam Lusk. And Ariel Fournier. And today we have Justin Tanucci back on the board because Garrett is still out. Woohoo. <laughs> you sound so enthusiastic. Woohoo. Good Yay, job. That was, that, was Woo-hoo! A little, that was a little better. I, 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 I just, I just don't want a voice crack. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I just, uh, I just <laughs> The voice of a 15 year old Oh, puberty. Boy. <laughs> Dang it. I'm still going through Well, it. <laughs> we have a very special guest today. She is calling in from South Florida. We have Lizzie Sider. How you doing, Lizzie? Good. How are you all? We're great. Doing great. We got three Floridians. Yeah. Floridians. Oh, yes. Floridians. Floridians. That's and right. One interview. So uh, were you born in Florida? I was born and raised. Yes. Where Where were you born? Uh, South Florida, the, the, the uh, Fort Lauderdale area. I would have laughed if you said Florida. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but you're actually you're doing um, an anti-bullying tour all across uh, Florida right now, right? Yes, I'm doing um, a 100 school bully wow. prevention assembly tour. Yeah, throughout the entire state of Florida. So I've been so far. Um, I've been all the way from from Key West. Yeah. Um, all yeah, where <laughs> Adam. Um, all the way up to the Pensacola yes, my, area my and area. the Panhandle. So it's been amazing, and still gonna go throughout you know, more places in the state of, of Florida um, through the end of March. So very, very excited. That's amazing. That is awesome. How'd you get started you. in the music? Uh, you know, I've always uh, loved music from, you know, the, the moment I knew what it was. And I just grew up listening to so many different artists and just being around it. My family isn't musical, but I've just, you know, always gone to shows and, and, and listened to music and just been inspired by it. And, you know, uh, when I was six years old, I was in my first musical theater production and I fell in love with that. And so what I started show, to what really show is it? get more into the singing and the acting and um, the dancing, but especially music and started taking voice lessons, started playing piano, a little bit of guitar and I've I've always loved it. I've been doing it ever since. And how did you get involved in the whole anti-bullying side of, um, like, why did you feel like that cause was important to you? Uh, I have experience with bullying from when I was in elementary school, actually. Um, I was teased by the other kids in my grade when I was in elementary school. And it was a very, very hard time for me to get through. And bullying and anti-bullying has been something that I've always been passionate about. And I decided that this year, it's actually my first year being homeschooled this year. So um, with the time that I now have, it's not a whole lot of time, but I really wanted to do something really significant with my time. And I thought, well, you know, what better way to spend it than to go out and to talk to the kids about bullying, go directly into the schools and incorporate my music into it too. So these assemblies are so interactive. They're a lot of fun. We talk about not only anti-bullying, but also positivity, self-esteem, and we sing a few songs and, and it's a real great time. That's That's awesome. How old are you? I'm 15. Wow. It's amazing. To be I, able to I, do thought that. It, I thought at least like 20. <laughs> <laughs> hey, thanks. But the fact that you're doing that at such a young age is so awesome. Well, yes, Lizzie comes across as, as very mature. I actually, um, I don't know if you know this, I was talking to your dad, but um, I saw Lizzie perform at uh, Hollywood Music and Media Awards in November, and she actually took home one for her song Butterfly, which oh, actually awesome. has an anti-bullying message. Um, so how did you come up with Butterfly, and would you tell us a little bit about that before we play it? 
Um, well, Butterfly is a song that I wrote about my experiences being bullied. And, you know, it's, it's not just a song about me. It's a song that can, you know, it's a, it's a song about all of us because we are all beautiful, we're, we're all special, we're all unique, we're all different, like a butterfly. And it's about overcoming whatever situation that we may go that we may be going through, whether it's um, bullying, whether it's another hardship that we may be facing. It's you know having that inner strength, finding that inner strength to overcome that, like a butterfly. So that's the song, and it's it means so much to me. It's a lot of fun too. <laughs> All right, well, I think we should take a listen to this. This is your song, Butterfly. Yeah, Justin. Uh, wait. Yeah. We got a newbie. I used to hide and keep inside, afraid to show the world who I was. In shades of gray, I spend my day. So invisible because it always put me down Yeah, let it keep me down But look at me now, look at me now Finally coming out, I don't want to fly Gonna spread my wings, bright and colorful things Let them take me up and touch the sky They thought they knew me, plain and shy But all Safe little space It's only fear That kept me here With dreams too big for this small place They liked me deaf and dumb Had no idea what I And now, now you actually uh, you you write most of your music, right? Yes, I um, do. So, would you talk a little bit about your writing process? Yeah. Um, well, I write most of my songs based off of personal experiences. So, I've been writing since I was like nine years old, and um, it's really funny. I keep a binder of all the songs that I've ever written, and I was looking through them recently. And it was so cute looking back at the, you know, first songs that I ever wrote, how simple and how they didn't really make sense. (laughs) But, um, you know, as, as time has gone on, I've, I've really grown in my writing and I, I love writing songs. I write not only by myself, but with other people as well. And I really like doing that because I get to, you know, find new styles and, and find, um, different techniques and, and different points of view. 
Um, so that's really cool to combine all of the, you know, writers' personalities into a song when you're co-writing. But I write songs on, on my guitar, my piano, and I love just sitting down and letting the ideas flow out because it's really, when I write a song, I'm just letting my heart, you know, pour out onto the paper or <laughs> I guess lately it's on my computer. But um, it's an amazing feeling writing a song. Mm-hmm. And like, if you could compare yourself to any artist, who do you think you sound like? Oh, I don't know. I, I actually, I don't know who I sound like, but I can tell you that um, I draw inspiration from many different artists um, that I, you know, I find little bits and pieces maybe in their style or in their voice that I love. And I try to learn from that. I try to apply that to my own. Um, Ava Cassidy was one of my favorites. Also Kelly Clarkson. Um, I love Taylor Swift. Let's see. Uh, Lady Annabellum. I think her, Taylor Swift, her voice definitely. is wonderful. Um, Hillary. Also, let's see. I also love Carrie Underwood. I think she has this powerful voice. Yes, definitely. And, and Faith Hill, I love. And Taylor Swift. Um, <laughs> huh? And Taylor Swift. Oh, of course. And Taylor Swift. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> all, <laughs> all of those people. Yeah. And I find little things about, you know, their voices or their styles that I love. And I think that helps me grow as an artist, too. And Butterfly actually has over a million hits on YouTube. Wow. So how, what, yes, was that, what was that? Thank you. Yeah, what was that moment like when you saw it hit a million? I mean, that's just incredible. It was, um, it was a pretty cool moment. Um, <laughs> and, and I get messages on my YouTube and in my Facebook and Twitter and um, my website and my social media sites just, you know, from people who tell me that Butterfly has inspired them and, and someone even got a, a butterfly tattoo because of my song. Aww. And, that. you know, it, things like that where they say that Butterfly, you know, they can relate to the song and that it, it helped them overcome something Aww. that they were going through. It's, um, it's just the most amazing feeling. See, that's that's got to be like the artist's like – main objective or like main goal in life is to have like a song that connects to people as much as you know your song butterfly does i know um lauren had uh, a bunch of people with was it alive uh i had a couple with stereotype um a couple with alive mostly recently it's been off of here's to us but yeah it's definitely when you have that song where people relate and then they send you messages like, "Oh yeah, yeah, I stopped doing so and so, um, or not so and so. Stop doing <laughs> something. <laughs> that sounds wrong." No, I had a, yeah, I had we got you. In <laughs> New Zealand <laughs> who messaged me about I think it was stereotype, and she said she was suicidal. And after listening to my music, um, like went and got help, and that's wonderful. Is being better, and it's, wow. it's, it's you can honestly, I I bet you feel the same way. It's like the best feeling. There is no other feeling in the world that can um, compare because you feel like you've done something Meaningful. out of something you love that, that even helping no, someone that even no one else could no like exactly and I think that it's not only that with artists it's not only that with musicians but I mean also when we go and we do um, like volunteer work or maybe if if we help out a, a friend with something or, yeah. or you know doing good for others I think that um, that rewarding feeling is like none other has there been a, like a specific fan experience you've encountered that's like really stuck in your head like it, whether it's the tattoo one or is there anything specific that like makes you remember that moment oh you know um I, there there have been so many amazing moments on this journey so far um one of them i want to talk to you guys about was on my school tour um before i did the 100 school tour in florida i did an over 80 school tour in California um, throughout the entire state in October and November. And I'm actually going to be going to Texas in April and May. Um, So you're just, but in in California, there was this one school we went to. It was a lot of fun. The assembly was great. And afterwards I, I met everyone and I got to speak to some of the kids. And there was this one girl that came up to me and she started talking to me and, and she wanted to give me, this bracelet that she had and it was a beautiful bracelet um you know I kept saying are you are you sure and and this is so special she says yeah I'm sure I want you to have it and 
the the principal um, came up to me afterwards and she said, I went up to her and I made sure that she wanted to give that bracelet to you because that meant so much to her. Um, this child has gone through so many things in her life. She um, has switched foster families many, many times um, and and she's gone through a lot and she's been, you know, very down. She's been depressed. And she told me when I asked her, I said, well, are you sure you want to give Lizzie this bracelet? And she said, yes, because Lizzie taught me to believe in myself again. And she taught me, you know, that, that I can rise above all of these things and, and just believe in myself. And so, you know, that was just one of the things that just stuck out because that bracelet was, was given to her by one of her foster mothers, I, I believe, and she just carried that with her. And it meant so much to her. So now that she's passing that on to me, wow. um, that was just something that definitely stuck out. And moments like that just, I, I mean, just encourage me to continue doing what I'm doing to, and, and to go even farther. And I, I just love it. And see, that's why I'm doing this. I'm doing this not only because I love it, but, you know, like we were talking about, that feeling of helping others and, and inspiring others is the, the most incredible thing. I think Adam was about to cry. Yeah. Stop it. Everybody's yes. getting teary out of here. It's yeah. like such a sweet story. That's I, like, I, like, you know that moment, like, right before you cry and you feel like the tears building up in the bottom of your eye, eyelid? I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> That's the nice thing it's about okay, being an you can actor let it out. and learning I just to cry gotta hold it back. You know how to shut it off. <laughs> You're like, stop it. I Don't gotta, cry. I can't do it. I can't. I have to look like a strong man on camera. <laughs> <laughs> but that is such an amazing story. And to, to be able to help someone like that not only makes them feel better it makes you feel like you're doing such an amazing thing yeah thank you but uh when you did that that 80 school tour i think you also you were on the queen lativa show and you performed butterfly what what <laughs> right? that was very exciting yes. the queen um, in show? the beginning what? of october um right at the beginning of the school tour i was on the queen lativa show and i got to perform my song butterfly um in the studio, on the stage. It was a very, very cool moment. Um, that was my first time performing in a, um, you know, indoor studio like that with the live studio audience. And um, Queen Latifah was amazing. She's such an incredible woman. Um, and and the crew, the whole day was fantastic. So that was, that was very exciting. I didn't know that we were talking to a celebrity. It's so wow. fun. <laughs> Gotta change our questions now. We gotta like we gotta What's up it this. like being famous? <laughs> um y- you know, I I just love doing what I'm doing every day. Um That's what it, really counts, to be honest. It, is Yeah, it does. It doesn't mean, matter just, about well, the fame or the money, it's doing what you love. That's like that's my biggest motto and I actually changing lives. Like yeah, it's changing lives, doing what you love to do. And, like, uh, my favorite quote is, like, um, oh, God, what is it? <laughs> you think Adam, Adam always has to think. I feel like Justin. <laughs> Shut up, man. Justin has a look on his face like he's going to say something about 21 Pilots. No, I can't. <laughs> Dude, imagine if he did. I could be a homeless man with a guitar and be happier than if I In- worked a salary job a boring salary in Nashville job I, wasn't I remember I remember seeing someone like that I, who uh, hopefully I'm not a homeless man with a guitar I mean but I, yeah. I, I want to stay away you wanna, from that. do you, you want to be a but, man with a home with a guitar yeah I mean <laughs> I, but I would be happier as a homeless man with a guitar because I'm doing what I love yeah yeah, yeah. makes sense and but you also have another song for another great cause um called thank you and it's dedicated to the military and this is especially like special to me because i also have a song dedicated to the military called american hero so when i heard your song i was like getting all teary-eyed do you feel like it's easier to write towards a a a cause like do you feel like that's like um what your market is is to write these songs with a special meaning you know i find that i i do write a lot of songs with a special meaning just because that's where my heart is um, and, and because I, I feel such a connection to, you know, like Butterfly with the anti-bullying or like Thank You, um, that's dedicated to all of our troops and the families and friends. Um, so, so that song is very, very special to me as well. Well, I think we should take a listen. started at two 
Songs together. That's so beautiful. Such a beautiful Thank voice. Thank you. Um, and you actually, you actually go to Nashville a lot too. I need to meet you when I go to Nashville. Right? <laughs> I love um, for sure. so yeah. much. And and the Country Music Association named you as an artist to watch in 2013, oh, and I awesome. definitely would agree with that. And coming from Nashville, I'll, that's like yeah. huge because you know it's all country music, pretty much. Thank you. Yeah, it, it was um, it was quite amazing that you know I that they put me alongside of some other wonderful country artists as well who are who are doing such great things so that was an honor um also to be you know recognized by the cma for something like that wow cmas are big there's i I don't know if it's just me but does it feel like there's always like so many country music awards like especially like like i always notice on tv there's always like designed for country music like Oh, yeah. specifically for country. Yeah. Like there's like the CMAs, 
There's the uh, I'm forgetting there's all ones, the other yeah. names of country yeah. music awards, but I always feel like there's like ones dedicated to Tractor just country music awards. Yeah, like they <laughs> beer country music. Awards. Like there's always like country music awards, but there's not like any like singer songwriter music yeah, awards totally. on TV or rap music awards or <laughs> or anything else, yeah. but it's always country because there it has such be a popular influence. New wave alternative pop screamo opera rap metal. Musicals. So you mean Panic at the Disco wins everything? <laughs> 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 but uh, I think I would attend this last. Uh, yeah, this last song we have for you, "I Love You That Much." It it, it also reached top forty on the Music Row charts in Nashville. Oh, that's awesome! Um, and also, Thank I think you. Butterfly did as well, right? Yeah, they yeah. both did. I mean, that's that's amazing. Um, maybe for our listeners who don't know what that is, would you talk a little bit about Music Row in Nashville and that kind of thing? Yes, um, Music Row is a very well-respected um, radio charting, um, well, Music Row charts. Um, they're very well-respected in, in Nashville. And both uh, Butterfly and I Love You That Much both uh, made the top 40 on there. So that was very exciting. That's awesome. It's kind of like, I guess, for people that know Billboard, I guess it's kind of like that, but for country. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, but we want to thank you so yes, much for thank calling you. in, and we it's, wish you. We appreciate everything that yeah. you do as far as the whole um, anti-bullying tour. I think that is incredible, and uh, we will keep up with you. We'll yes. continue to play your music. We think that you are amazing. Um, so thank you so much for coming on, and have a great time on your tour. Uh, thanks, guys, so much for having me. All thank right. you. And this is "I Love You That Much" by Lizzie Sider. And I won't mess up. Good job, Justin. Yes. Talking to you on the phone as we both start drifting off to sleep. Taking the smiles and laughs of the greatest days into tomorrow's memories. You're my favorite crazy baby. That's why I love you that much. From our kiss, our first date in the moonlight, to every good end or every good night. To how I feel when you say that you love me To the warmth of your touch when you touch me To every dream when I wake up That's why I love you that much Count the stars in a universe Don't compare It can never be enough to hear now without a doubt To all that's yet to come From every road from here to there To everywhere I love you that much From our kiss, our first day in the moonlight To every good end or every good night To how I feel when you say that you love me To the warmth of your touch when you touch me Every dream when I wake up You've opened up my arms out wide I thank God you're by my side I can't deny, I realize you and I Have become my every reason why Every good end or every good night To how I feel when you say that you love me To the warmth of your touch when you touch me From our kids our first day in the moonlight To every good end or every good night To how I feel when you say that you love me To the warmth of your touch when you touch me To every dream when I
such a pretty voice. I know. Can't believe she's 15. I know. And she's like 20 for the first breaker. half of the interview. It's sound, <laughs> yes, Lizzie. Thank you. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you very much for uh, coming on the show. Um, yeah, it was great. Thank you guys again for having me. It was a lot of fun. Yeah, and we'll be looking forward to seeing you in the future. Maybe come yeah, to California come and hang out with yeah, us. Yeah, come hang out with us. Love to have you in studio. Hey, it sounds like a plan. Awesome. Okay. All right, we'll see you next Thanks, time. Lizzie. Okay, bye. 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 There we go. Awesome. And that now. was Lizzie. So now we have quite an amazing fellow, indeed, Mr. Ruben. An amazing fellow, really. I think so. Where's he? Least. Where's that person at? <laughs> He's sitting right across from me. The guy threatened. Justin. That's oh, it. His name is Justin. Yes, I'm Justin. <laughs> <laughs> I gave you a compliment. You shot it off in a well, different no, I'm direction. I'm extraordinary. Oh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> see, I, got, I get the difference. You didn't there even you say go. his last that name. What's good. your problem? Well, it's Ruben J, right? <laughs> Ruben yes, J. Ruben yes. J. Yes. Careful how you say that. J. <laughs> What, yeah. Is there a way I could mess it up? Well, I was I was at a lunch meeting once, and the guy introduced me as Ruben Gay. <laughs> oh, because that's how you spell it with a J, right? You spell it's it's J A Y. What's but what's that? Oh, a G sound. Ruben Gay. <laughs> the guy was from Australia, so I don't blame. Oh, him. All right, there that, we go. That makes sense. Apparently, that, that makes him. sense. Apparently, people from Australia don't know how to speak English properly. <laughs> Good day. <laughs> yes. Well, well, how you guys doing? Thank sense. you guys for having me on the show. Yeah. yeah. Thanks for coming up on the show. It's really weird. I'm, you know, I do a radio show as well, which is one yes. of the things we're going to talk about. So it's weird being on this side instead <laughs> of being right there. Because usually I'm on this side over here running the board on the computer, not listening to anything. Well, I'm not doing too well. Let's switch places. You want to switch? <laughs> Can we switch? Do you mind? <laughs> yeah, oh, God. I don't, I don't know how Tony would no. feel, though. Yeah. I, I don't want to touch someone else. <laughs> We'd rather just see um, Justin Burn and fail. <laughs> I mean, this is pretty entertaining. Yeah, I, I can replace him if you need to. Okay. I can replace <laughs> yeah. him. It's, it's funny because I said up. burn because he's a ginger fire. <laughs> that was really good. <laughs> he's <laughs> a redhead. One of the best ones. That was but one so of the most original jokes <laughs> right? I've ever heard. Yeah, I, I feel like I feel like that's not true. <laughs> really? No. Really? You felt that way? <laughs> I feel like we're having a, a very uh, therapeutic moment here. And you guys are we're growing as a family. All oh, join hands I think that's a feeling circle. Oh, no. I think that's the reason why I was brought on the show was to help you. <laughs> yes. Yeah. But you're a life coach, right? I'm a life coach. Actually, yeah. one of the things I do uh, do by accident is is life coach people. <laughs> Wait, how do you do that by accident? Because they, they tell me about their problems and then I tell them what I would do if I was in their shoes and it ends up. Oh my God, I, I am you. We do the same thing. We should do a radio show together. Yeah, life. Dude, uh, unexperienced have people, have life people coaching. Call in. Not professionally yes. trained. No, exactly. Just, just call it unexperienced life coaching. The radio show. Oh, that would be so entertaining. I would Enjoy that. Wait, is that kind of like love line on Rate Chaos? Yeah, I, think, I think it would be like love line. Except for like teens. Dr. Drew is certified. Yeah, and yeah everyone on the show is certified, so it's like love line, but unexperienced. Yeah, I, don't you I think, think that'd be like illegal though? <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> no. We're, we're not going to be going by doctors. We're just going to be you know two young adults who happen to be able to tell you how to live your life. So <laughs> you have no experience in it whatsoever. Well, because I mean, our lives no, are a mess. Probably. Well, the only exp- well, my life isn't a mess. But the only mess I have in my life is my room. But yeah, I feel you there. It'd be two people who who just live life and probably don't even go through the issues everyone else is going through, but has seen the train wreck and decided, you know, that's how we avoid train wrecks. Yeah, you're like, I've never been through that, but if I did, here's what I do. Yeah, exactly, exactly. You avoid the train wreck by following the tracks. Exactly. I've actually given marital advice to people, and I'm I'm not even in a relationship. Yeah, I've never had a girlfriend, so. That's a lie. That sucks for you. I was... I was putting myself in your shoes. No, though. no, I've had a girlfriend in the past. That makes two of us. Me and Justin. Past. No. <laughs> hey, I've had that's not nice. <laughs> <laughs> that's not nice. But speaking of radio show stuff, yeah, you yes. immediately got on. I can already tell that you're a radio person because, you know. He's got you, the voice. You, you, well, you, you know the mics. You, you got the, the voice. System. You know the mics. You're just like, I got this. But talk <laughs> about your radio show a little bit. What happened with it? It's sort of not Well, yeah, well, what happened What happened is, is um, it, I went to broadcasting school way back in the day, 2011, 2012, and I graduated, and I did this radio show, and we uh, it was called On Air with Ruben J. It's a complete ripoff of On Air with Ryan Seacrest. <laughs> uh, almost down to the logo. Like, we had, like, a similar logo together. It's funny because we, uh, we have On Air with Tony sweet here nice like everyone has that yeah well because it's easy it's yeah. the most radio based name possible and so we did that for about two years solid uh we we were reaching like record listeners for ourselves and you know we were averaging a couple thousand listeners an episode and things were going great and all of a sudden uh, a potential career not a career change but a career enhancement came along with uh, event planning and so we did the first that's so summer event and that consumed my life where i wasn't able to do a radio show as regularly as i wanted to yeah. and then it kind of became a thing where the radio show became not obsolete but became um secondary to everything else i was mm-hmm. doing and so then 
every couple months I decide, oh, I want to do the radio show again because that's you know that's what I do. Yeah. Um, but unfortunately, I haven't been able to actually sit down and do the radio show. I've done the website. I have the website ready to go. I have everything ready to go except for the actual show. And, and you actually, you've been doing some YouTube videos as well. And yes. you, you interviewed Demi Lovato and Simon Cowell. So um, how was that? What is Simon you beat, like? You beat me to it. Sorry. Oh. Dang it. Sorry. What is he like in real life? Um, really? Simon Cowell is the legitimately the sweetest guy I have ever met. That's really surprising. Um, kind I, of. Oh, I, well, do a little backstory here. I was invited to cover um, the first week of live shows for The X Factor. Mm hmm. And so I met for this the la last season. La the last season, yeah. Yeah, because they, they got canceled. It now. Yeah, I, well, what? I think part of it was because Simon didn't think I was serious when I told him that I would replace him if he decided to go back to the UK. <laughs> um, I thought I could draw in a couple million people. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, so I got I got to meet the top. What was it? I think top sixteen or something for that show, or top twelve. And they're all great people, first and foremost. But Simon Cal comes over, introduces himself, and he gave me like this just genuine wink. <laughs> Wait, the one he what always is, does, right? Like yeah, the, yeah. The, the 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 real quick, you know that, and my heart melted. <laughs> like, legitimately, oh my, my, God. my heart melted. I'm like, this is Simon Cowell. You know, I I grew up watching this guy on TV for the past ten years of my life. He just winked at me like, hello, um, and Ding. and yeah, and then unfortunately, I don't know if you guys saw the video, but my microphone wasn't plugged in, so it was really crappy audio. <laughs> um, happens to all of us. Yeah, it happens to the best of us, right? Oh my gosh. Did you have Did you have anybody filming you, like, or have any audio guys, or was it just you and yourself? Well, it was me. It was a video, so we yeah. we had the video. We had the audio from the video, but the video was off an iPad. So it wasn't that kind yeah, of audio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, did you have like a sound guy or anything like that? No. Do, do, do I look rich? I, I don't. <laughs> I can't tell. I mean, you got a pretty snazzy blazer on. I bought this from a hobo down the street. We don't need to know that, though. <laughs> we don't need to know that. You're rich in my eyes. All right, cool. This is the one by Starbucks. Uh, yes, actually. <laughs> yes. He had a great deal. Um, I just had to give him a cigarette, and oh. so I had to go find a cigarette and then give it to him. Oh, okay. um, Picked it, it up was, off the ground. It's it was. I think it was half used. It was actually kind of gross. Uh, and, but the but the jacket, lovely. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Lovely. Um, so yeah, so so Simon was great, really nice. I actually <laughs> joked with them because during se from between season one and season two, they got rid of Steve Jones, who was the host of season yeah. one. Yeah. Because and, you know, <laughs> yeah. Well, and then yeah. Well, he he was a terrible host. Yeah. Uh, but I have I have no idea what you're talking about. He was a British guy, and you could never really understand him. <laughs> and he always kind of made contestants feel bad. Yeah, he was like, he's like mean, so hurry so up, like can can you like. Well, but the whole thing the whole thing with Rachel Crow, I don't know if you guys remember that when Rachel Crow was eliminated, the way he handled that, like he should have gone to commercial. Yeah. Rachel if I don't know if it's possible for us to look up the audio clip from this, but Rachel Crow was like a 13-year-old, you know, singer, she was great mm -hmm. and she was eliminated and she it looked like she fainted and passed Aww. out and fell on the stage and and if it was me, I would have said, let's go to commercial. Yeah. You know, because the minute you say, let's go to commercial, you have to go to commercial. Yeah. You know, um, and let her kind of recoup. But instead, they exploited it. And I think that's the reason why he got fired. Wait, what uh, happened with it? Well, he just, it was instead was of. Was he like, oh, get up. Well, You're fine. Not, I, I, well, not by saying that, but by yeah. continuing the show, in a sense, it kind of felt that way. He's like, I don't know right, why. We'll I just broke we'll out an accent right there. Didn't he was, wasn't he like, we'll be back next week? And um, yeah, he, and she's like crying, she's crying in the background with yeah. everyone holding her up. Like, it was yeah. bad. Well, and that right there also tells you why you shouldn't have, you know, such a low, you know, bottom limit for age. Yeah. But you they know? wanted to be different from American yeah, Idol and exactly. everything else. But. So, so, I mean, and then so they announced, you know, towards the, at the end of the season that he wasn't coming back. And so I was going to go to the San Francisco auditions to audition to be the host. And I told Simon oh. that. And he actually, he told me, he's like, you should have done it. Like, we probably would have hired you. I'm like, ah! I'm like, Dang Dude, it. I hate when that stuff happens. Yeah. When you're like, ah, mm -hmm. oh, man, they probably won't take me. And then you meet them and they're like, dude, we so would have taken you. Yeah, we, like, we, we so would at least give you the chance. Took and great took English. Did, 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 did. Who, who learned a Jew? Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I English. Have, I have no English. excuse. Do you I, even I have, English? Do you? I have no excuse for that right now. <laughs> You're tired. We'll go with that. <laughs> yeah. You know, I was I was partying or something last night. That so voice come crack on. was beautiful. I know that was. I went to falsetto right there. Oh, falsetto. purpose. Is that what that's called? It, yeah. it was better voice than Brendan well. Urie. No, <laughs> no, nothing's better than Brendan Urie. <laughs> or your puerity, whatever yeah. it was. <laughs> and then me and Adam were just fangirling over Demi. So oh my god, how, oh my god, love with Demi. How was she? Okay, so he like, dude, gets he, up and he, he leaves. He needed a moment that a, for that. He's yeah, like, Shh. so okay, you know, because this is actually kind of embarrassing. Um, so I have I have two friends that came with me to, to be like my production people, and um, and so all of a sudden it, it dawned on me that Demi Lovato is actually doing the press round. Like she's going from from outlet to outlet to outlet to outlet to outlet, and I see this. I'm like, oh my god, oh my god, 
And so I, I turned to my friend. I'm like, do you not realize I've had a crush on her since we were 15? Like, because she and I have grown up together pretty much. You know, we're the same age. We're I think we're like a month apart or something like that in birthdays. And I'm like, I have no idea what I'm going to say to her. I, like, do I just straight up ask her if we can go to coffee? Like, like, hey, can I, I love you. Well, <laughs> I did that with Kelly Rowland later pretty. on. pretty. And well, that's pretty much what pretty. it felt like. That's what it felt like. Yeah. It was like, you're uh, you're pretty. You're going on tour soon, aren't you? Uh, how's that? Like, it was seriously, it was probably the worst interview I've ever done as far as just like, it's somebody Were who you has, shaking or anything? Like, I was. That's, that's sort of how I felt when I first interviewed Cherry Bomb because like they were my favorite band ever for the mm-hmm. longest time, actually for like two months, actually <laughs> less than that. But still. Um, and I asked them to be on the show as a yeah, fill-in host. And, and, I, and like, I, I like fangirled at that moment. And when I saw them for the first time, I was like, oh my God. I will say I will say this. Um, I fangirled more when I met Ryan Seacrest. Really, um, that's awesome. Well, I mean, yeah. you're junior He's Ryan Seacrest, so yeah. There you yeah. go. Well, you know, yeah, it was it was great. Demi was great. She was, you know, so sweet. I mean, obviously, I, I don't know if you guys saw the video, but she was definitely all total business at that point. But I was really contemplating asking her to go to coffee or you something. You should have done it, man. You should have done it. Should have, because because I thought I would see her again, you know, in the future weeks. But I ended up not being invited back because they had, you know, more important, you know, People. outlets there. <laughs> um, yeah. So I, I always take the chance to. Ask yeah, well, I, I was gonna do it next. Yeah, week you ask every week. waitress at lunch if for a number. You know what? It's a thing. I gotta do it. Uh, but speaking of Ryan Seacrest and hosting things, uh, you host things. I do. I yeah, do. you hosted the Vault show that I played at. That was pretty cool. Yeah, that was back in January. I don't know. All right. <laughs> All right. Sure. Well, I also hosted Lauren this yeah, last. Yeah, like was a week ago. Last week, yeah. It was a week ago. Yeah. Now like, you're right, hosting me. Right. That's right weird. before I lost oh, my yeah. voice. <laughs> The pleasure moment of hearing me right before my voice completely left me. Yes, and that was very because you were sick that day, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, you were. And you were, I had horrible allergies. And after that show, I had another show the night um, next morning at six thirty in the morning. <laughs> and then I went to Panic at the Disco that night. Yeah. When I pick, when I picked Justin up, he's like, "Hey, I'm like, hey." He's like, "You sound horrible." So like right before that show, I didn't when we were talking, say that I said you sounded like a forty year old smoker. Same thing, right? More like a seven year old smoker. But um but no, right before that we got to talk and um we did the vault show. Nice. Awesome. Well then you also went to Imagine Dragon the night before, didn't you? Yeah, that was my Valentine's Day. Oh Oof. man, that was supposed to be my Valentine's Day. It was What did you end up doing? Uh, was Ice the, cream. Well Netflix. I watched a walk to remember uh, <laughs> a glass of wine and um a teddy bear, I think is what my Valentine's Day teddy ended up being. I watched I Valentine's watched Breakfast Day. with Tiffany's, which was which was the first time I saw it, and I loved it. Pretty sure oh, I played I GTA it. Five all day. Do you have GTA? Can I go to your house next? <laughs> I haven't played that game in so long. Oh my god, it's addicting. You it, guys can spend next Valentine's Day together. Deal. Date. Yeah, got it. Got it's it. a date. We got it. Just don't, just don't cancel on me last minute, right? No. Did you I'll know that there's a fetish of people who are attracted oh, to teddy bears? <laughs> Please stop. We're not <laughs> talking <laughs> to you anymore. Can we, can we edit that part out? Can we edit that? <laughs> yeah. Please. Uh, yeah. But but did when you met Ryan, did, did he give you any advice? or? Unfortunately, uh, it wasn't in the best of circumstances when I met oh. Ryan. Um, it was at Jingle Ball 2012. So about two years ago now. Okay. About a year and a half ago. And I have a... Um, uh, how do I word this without giving giving this guy's name away? Uh, his name is Joe, and he works for Clear Channel. <laughs> his name's not really Joe. Yeah, but, that's what um, I assumed. Yeah, so we'll just call him Joe because um, it's his middle name. And uh, <laughs> and so he worked for Clear Channel, and he was working the day of. And so mm-hmm. uh, I went and I said, "Hey, dude, you know, I have tickets. You know, let's let's you know meet up if we get a chance. You know, I'll buy you a drink or whatever." Uh, and he was like, "You're not 21 yet. How are you invite a drink?" I was like, well, "I'll have you buy the drink, and then I'll just have a you know a water bottle." And uh, and so he, he texts me about halfway through the show. Says, "Hey, dude, come to the lobby." So I go out to the lobby. You know, we talk for a few minutes. Like, all right, I gotta get back to work. But here are two backstage passes. Sweet, that's awesome. So instantly, I'm like, "Oh my god, I'm gonna read Ryan Seacrest." Oh my god, that's literally what I said to him. And he said, "Dude, don't ever do that again." <laughs> and uh, he said, <laughs> "Don't do that, man." Stop. He's like, "Just don't." Can I have the passes back? And, yeah. And I blew it. No. Oh, so then I go backstage and I take my friend with me. You know, we we'll go backstage. And as I walk backstage, there's James Valentine from Rune 5. Okay. And so he was so cool. And then Taylor Swift walks in because she's headlining. And apparently, Taylor Swift pushed my friend by mistake. Like, not like pushed her, but like bumped into her. And they had this huge conversation while I'm just like trying to plan, how am I going to meet Ryan Seacrest? Like, you're not even p- aware of your surroundings. Yeah, I had no idea Taylor Swift was even there. Like, I saw her walk in the room, you know, and I'm like, oh, Taylor, where's Ryan? All right, oh, Ryan's over there with all the people. All right, cool. So he's going to go on stage and introduce Taylor Swift. There's a, there's only one way out. There's a door right behind me. Mm-hmm. So I went and I stood by the door. I'm wearing a Kiss FM employee badge. And he looks at me, he does this, and walks into the stairs. And I'm thinking to myself, all right, I'm going to 
not stockishly, but just I'm going to go and I'm follow him as if I'm it's supposed to escort him out the building, you know, as a staff member of Kiss FM. And um, we're going up these flight of stairs. It feels like a movie. Like, like, like when someone's about to die, you know, not, oh, like, not a good movie. That's not, that's not a good thing. No, no, no yeah. it, it just it felt like a movie. My throat all of a sudden feels really dry. And I'm thinking in my head, okay, I'm going to be calm. I'm going to go upstairs and I'm going to approach him. Well, as I'm thinking that thought, my, I go, All right, it's Seacrest! <laughs> oh, crap. He, he turns around. He, he looks at me. He does, I got to talk to you real quick. And he looks at me and he looks at my badge. He's like, All right, come here. And so I went and I shook his hand and said, uh, My name's. Uh, uh, Ruben. My name's Ruben. Forgot, Ruben. Your, name. Yeah. forgot <laughs> your name. <laughs> and, and as that happens, his, his secretary comes over and says, Can I help you with something? And he walks away. And apparently I cried after that. Oh. Apparently. 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 apparently That's what people told me. I, yeah, well, actually, my friend comes back. She's like, Why are you crying? And I'm like, I'm not crying. I just met Ryan Seacrest. And it, <laughs> apparently, I was crying. So that's intense. Yeah, that's well, that awesome. was quite very, intense. Very intense. Very good. T- very, it was. You just have a. You s- you seem to have a bit of an issues meeting. Um, your idols. Well, <laughs> or your well, crushes. Demi was my that. crush. De- Demi was a crush. Definitely. I got a crush on Demi um, too. But I was able to actually talk to Demi, as opposed to with Ryan, where I'm just uh, like, hey. I don't know what to do. <laughs> I I've been practicing this for three years. I still don't know what to do. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Yeah, but it was, it was a good time. I mean, he was definitely nice enough to at least stop and shake my hand. Um, and then and then Mario Lopez. I met Mario Lopez at the X Factor, and he was actually so easy to talk to because he's not – for me, he's not on the same level as Ryan. <laughs> but Because he was just acts as Hollywood, and now he's, you know, <clears throat> X Factor. Well, a- was. Ex- extra. 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 Uh- Oh, did I just do that? You just did that. I totally just did that. It's all right. Do you, do you want to you go back and we can no, re-edit no, that? No, 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 it's fine. You're going to live fine. with the mistake? I, yeah, I can live with it. If I, if I ever meet Lar- Mario Lopez, he'll judge me because he if obviously he watches listens this. to this. Yeah, if he listens or Obviously, he this. listens to this. Well, I'm on the totally. show, so maybe he will. <laughs> I mean, I'm here, so he has to. So, God. Um, yeah, so I, I just totally blanked on what I was going to say. Uh, hey, I, talk- I saw you look down at your notes, look up, and be like, I have no idea where I'm going next. No, yeah. I looked down at my notes, and I'm like, <laughs> no, I got this. Yes, then I no, look at you, and yeah. I was like, oh, God, I don't remember. No. That's but- how I felt when I met Ryan Seacrest. Yeah. <laughs> now you know except how I felt. Except, now, except for notes, it was your name. Doodles yeah, of cats. Well. <laughs> <laughs> so what's this thing? Uh, officially the hottest.com. Oh, officially the hottest. This, this sounds, this, honestly, this sounds like a dating app. <laughs> <laughs> Hot or not? Yeah, I'm gonna. I don't have me, that. Let me text Akash real quick and let him know we need to change the name of the. Uh, oh God. <laughs> the, the website. No, officially the hottest.com is was originally a hip hop based site, and I guess the hottest is something that's hip hop related. Well, over the past year, they've kind of changed over to being a little bit more mainstream, a little bit more pop, and covering a lot, a lot bigger genre of of music. And so uh, I was approached about six months ago initially to host their podcast. And their podcast basically talking about the latest stuff in yeah. entertainment. Is this pretty much the radio show you're starting, or is this a separate thing? A separate thing. Okay, separate cool. Thing. So I have, the radio, I have the radio show on air with Ruben J, which is launching um, mid-March. Um, I'll look at my calendar right now, but it'd be rude to do that. Um, Mid-March, and then uh, the podcast launched back in December. Okay. So we have we're like four episodes into the podcast. So, you, the, so you're already doing this. Yeah, the podcast is only a couple a uh, couple minutes long. It's like I think the max we'll ever do is like 15 minutes of, right. of a podcast, and it's literally just this is what happened this last week and my thoughts mm-hmm. on it. Um, the most entertaining one I've ever done was the one about Justin Bieber being arrested. So oh go back God. that go back and listen to that one. That one's definitely. Um, but yeah, officiallyhottest.com is uh, a great place, especially for uh, musicians, to kind of get some uh, exposure. Yeah, exposure. Awesome. And so, one final thing before we have to wrap it up. Really I have quick. four final things, man. Oh, I don't. I got four more things to talk about. I don't know what that means. I don't know what that means either. Oh God, what are we gonna do? We're running low on time. Anyway, um, <laughs> speed round, go. Yes, you're a singer. Rap God. No, that's good. <laughs> yeah, you're a singer. Yes. Um, I'm not gonna ask you to demonstrate okay, right n- now. Not really. Not really. How? Um. Well. Okay. Well. People always wonder, well, I'm going to tell you a quick story. People always wonder what, how I got into broadcasting. Mm-hmm. And so I tell them in high school, I decided I was an experiment in a little bit of everything. And so um, I, I joined the choir mm-hmm. and um, I did a couple solo performances. I had a decent voice at the time because uh, I was practicing and warming it up every day and exercising it. Uh, and then I stopped. Then everything changed when puberty hit. Well, no, I've been I've had this deep voice since I was seven. Oh, so I mean, I can yeah. I can imagine that you're like shaving when you just come out of the womb. It's like, mother, <laughs> I want ice cream. 
<laughs> can I have some ice cream, please? Yes, honey. Actually, she's Mexican, so she said, see. Cartoons. So, 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 yeah. So, I don't. I'm not a singer per se, but now I use it, and more. I'm starting to use it more in a comedic form, yeah. like comedy. Yeah, like Bo Burnham. Do you know who that is? Or Stephen Lynch. Weird Al Yankovic is more of what I would say. Uh, okay, all except right. He, I get that. Except he can actually sing. Yeah. And you can't. I I think you can. Um. I I, I mean I'm I probably could hold a tune if I really tried. Um. But the the problem is I really don't try. Ah, uh, I gotcha. Start trying. Start trying, maybe. yeah. Well, I mean, if I ever, d- I, I do plan on releasing like a comedic record, um, but part of the whole shtick is that I can't actually sing. Um. Mm. But I don't think it's unbearable. I don't think it's like the people where they're like, ah, you know, I think it's, I don't think it's unbearable. <laughs> Sounds like me. That's Justin. Uh, <laughs> well, actually, but if you if guys come out to the Justin vault March raps. 8th, you'll get to see uh, a little bit of that. Oh, awesome. Uh, because you're doing something with an acoustic band, am I right? Oh, well, a, an acoustic self. Oh, acoustic, acoustic self. So, are you having a backing per person, people, or just you're no, just me, me, just me and a guitar. Awesome. Oh, me self me guitar. equals self. one person. You know what? <laughs> it could it could not? Well, before yeah, no. learning some math today. Mm. Yeah, well, hey, you I'm know what? We're doing life lessons, math, yep. and talking about Ryan Seacrest and my, grammar. And grammar, apparently. Before yeah. we wrap up, my question to you as a radio host: Yes, give us your best radio voice. My best radio like, like, voice. Like, you know the iconic like, radio be, okay, voice. Here, you're gonna say, Let's all go around and I'm, attempt. I'm Ruben oh, Jay, no. and welcome to the Music Project. Okay. Oh, the most over-the-top radio voice you can possibly do. Okay. I believe in you. <sighs> can we go to commercial first? No. <laughs> <sorry>. <laughs> all right. Uh, well, can you write down what I'm going to say? The pressure's mine, on. Real quick? EA Sports in the game. I know, right? <laughs> yeah, I, I have to. I'm sorry. What if I, you have me read copy. I have to have it. Right How about now. we go the opposite okay. way? How about Justin starts? Yeah, Justin, yeah, yeah. you start. Best radio voice over the top. Welcome to Beyond the Spotlight. This is our show. <laughs> <but> Beyond <laughs> the Spotlight. <laughs> <laughs> That's, That's Sam Lynch's show. He's on. Okay. Y- he's on Saturdays. Hey, buddy. Hey, Sam. Where's Sam? <laughs> Where's where Sam? He's um, on Saturdays. He's home. Wait. Welcome. So this isn't Sam Lant? No. All right. Well, I blo- one more try. Music project. music project. Yes. Welcome to the music project. Perfect. It doesn't. It's not as convincing with a girl because it's always guy announcers. Yes. Unless you're Chloe Kardashian, right, and that go. was just weird. That was terrible. Go. Welcome to the music project. Can I do my movie announcer voice? Sure. Go for yeah. it. Wait. Go to you first. I gotta. Get oh God! This. I, this is me. This is so not me. Okay. I know. Welcome to the music project. Okay, that sounded like a lifetime commercial. <laughs> <laughs> Tonight hey. on Lifetime, All we right. have the pregnancy pack. Exactly, yeah. All right, Adam's turn. All right, all right. Let's see if I can do this. Welcome. Nope. No, fine. That was pretty good. <laughs> that was good. No, that wasn't bad. Welcome. No, I'm not gonna do it. No. Yep. Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. I don't yeah. want to hear myself. Out. Okay, hang on. I gotta do it. You go first. I can do it. You no, go no, no, you have to. You've been building this up for a while yeah. now. We Pressure's on. You, Pressure's it'll on. It'll be build. It'll be even more build when you do it and <laughs> I do it. No, All they're right. gonna compare the two of us and say I lost. So I rather go last, and that's that's what they remember me as is, is yeah. the guy who wins. Just the guy go. who lost. Three, He's the guest. two, All right. one, go. Welcome to the music project. See, Not that bad. was awesome. Very cool. Good job. Very cool. Good Terrible. Like right. You have no future. Oh God. In broadcasting. Oh, God. <laughs> All right, let's do this. My name is Ruben Jay, and you're listening to The Music Project. Very nice. good. Very good. Thank you. Well, we want to thank you so much for coming on. It's been yes. delightful. Can I, can I, can I plug something real yeah. quick? Yes. yes. Do it, do it, do it. All right. First and foremost, March 8th. Come out. Check me out. Uh, we have False Puppet, Cherry Bomb, Almost Anywhere, and uh, one band. I think Adam I, was talking yeah, about Madden, that one, too. Yeah, Madden, Madden, Madden Mac. Madden Mac. Madden Mac. Madden Mac will be performing. The Vault at $7. You go to rubenj.com to find out information on that. Uh, real quickly, shout out to my friend Kaylin Marie. She just released her EP today. Oh, uh, awesome. Called Things, Things From Yesterday. It's on sale on iTunes. Go check that out. It's a great EP. I got a copy of it before anyone else did, and it was legitimately it's, it's, it's a great EP. Follow me on Twitter at TheRubenJ, Facebook.com slash TheRubenJ, and catch me in mid March for the launch of On Air with Ruben J. Awesome. awesome. Thank, Thank you so yeah. much. For we were going to do that, but you did it better. All right, yeah. <laughs> oh, well, see, well, I, okay, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's okay. You did it like easily tw- 10 times better. We'll than just bring him in every week to oh. say that. Yeah, right. Can you do our, our fill ins for me? Like. <laughs> yeah. All right, yeah, thank I'll, you, thank thank you guys on. so much. Yeah. I unfortunately won't be here next week because I'll no. be on a boat with Paramore, Tegan, and Sarah. Um, on on me without you, yeah. Shiny Troy I'm Guns, Me Found Glory. Woo! And Paramore's going to be there? Oh, yeah, oh for God. a week. So I won't be here next week. Um, 
But I'm leaving you in good hands with Ariel and Adam and yes. possibly Garrett. We don't know. <laughs> Who possibly. decides to show up? We don't know. I'll, yeah. I'll, right. I'll learn how to run the board You've this been time. listening to The Music Project. Thank you guys. See you next week. And then you got to end the show. Shows that make you laugh. Shows that make you think. Music that moves you. It can only be one place. Universal Broadcasting Network. Tune in at ubnradio.com. Ah, the holidays. A time for giving, a time for getting, and a time for going and going and going and going and going. When you need a break, we're here.